Hey there everybody, Simone Jansen here with Bulletproof Business Growth and as always with some ideas and insights what to pay attention to when you're growing and scaling business. Now, today's topic is really essential for growing your business and the question around what we're talking about is, is your mission actually scaling ready? So is your mission, is your core offering designed to scale from day one? Because what we see a lot of times is we have clients who are on a good track, who are getting some good momentum, and then they're like, okay, I wanna do more of that. They pile on the leads, they pile on the customers, and everything goes haywire, and nothing works anymore, and they actually lose business versus gaining business, and there's a whole lot of stress and insanity and disappointment involved in that. So. You know, when you think about the nature of an entrepreneur, there's always a little bit of that shiny object syndrome because most of us are really good at starting things, at concepts, at ideas and creativity and coming up with stuff, but then actually sticking to something and making it, putting in the work, putting in the effort to systemize and structure and focus it in, that's where we fall apart. And it's not necessarily because <laughs> it, well, actually it is because it's a, an entirely different skill set and not everybody can cultivate what it takes to actually grow a business, right? So this is, this is a really big difference because a lot of times the, the shiny object syndrome is you're running a business, you see an opportunity, and you, you pivot or move into that direction because it promises uh, quick cash flow, but what it actually does, or like a great opportunity, and it looks really fun, but what it actually does, it dilutes your message, it dilutes your brand, it dilutes your capabilities, and that means it's destroying your focus and your momentum. So the caveat here is your job, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, when you grow, is to take market feedback, interpret it, and adjust accordingly. So a lot of times you start your business for one reason and for one focus, and then you know it works kind of in the early stages, but as you grow, as you develop, suddenly you notice what you started with certainly uh, suddenly is not working as well as it used to, or you are noticing that customer feedback is asking for some things that you hadn't really thought about before, or that wasn't really in your wheelhouse before, but to really make this thing work and get to the next portion of market share, if you don't do that, you're going to get stuck at the level you're at. And that's what happens to many, many business owners. So to take that market feedback and to interpret it and digest and adjust this this you must do that it's an absolute must do to be successful so what you do today must may not be what you started with and there's kind of this difference between conscious evolution versus being lost in the fray and unclear about what your unique selling proposition really is. So th I really wanna make this, this distinction because what I first talked about, the conscious evolution part, that is where you're looking at what I said, you're looking at how your offer is going, how the market is responding, you make adjustments, and then you keep tweaking it until you feel like you're really hitting some good momentum some um and that that what that's what gives you scalability so part of what that taking feedback is to really notice hey so what we're doing if you want us to grow fast if you want to scale what you must notice as the business owner is is like what we do does this fit for 80 percent of our customers so 80 like our, our offer, our unique selling proposition, our value that we deliver, is that the core offering for 80% of our customers? Because what I see quite often is 
there's, you know, you do what you do and then a customer goes, hey, it'd be really cool if you could also offer X, that'd be really awesome for me. And you listen to it and you're like, oh, that would be really fun. And then you go to that, that direction and you waste a whole lot of time, money and momentum on that just to discover later that this was something that sounded fun to you. It was something that that customer was, would have really wanted, but it's not what 80% of your customers want. So that actually means you just wasted a lot of time, money and energy and momentum on this. So we have to keep this money in mind, uh, this, this math in mind. It, it has to be meaningful. It has to be something that 80% of your customers want because otherwise the, the chaos that comes out of that kills your opportunity for effective growth. So your goal, if your goal is to grow fast, to scale, right? The first thing needs is, is you really need clarity on the exact problem you solve better than anybody in your market. And your product or your service has to be set up so it can 10 X without a hiccup. That's, that has to be the thinking you come from. You have to have ex a clarity on the exact problem that you solve better than anybody. And your product or your service has to be set up so that you could easily 10 X without having hiccups in your delivery. So to be able to do that, the first thought is to focus on your, there's really only four scaling levers and otherwise if you don't do that and I'll talk in, in a minute, I'll talk about what they are, but if you don't focus on those scaling four scaling levers and keep them in mind, you will either implode or get stuck. So first scaling lever is always to ask yourself, do I absolutely love this? Like, do I love doing this? Because if you don't, you can't scale with excellence. Like the, the, the energy and the belief and the commitment and the inspiration that it takes to really focus in on something and work very, like you're gonna work hard and consistently to really get it done. So that's not possible if you don't love this. You must have this passion, this conviction, this commitment for your client, for your delivery team, for your marketing, for your sales, for the problem solving that goes along with growth. So that's number one. Number two is you have to be inequivocally the best at your craft. So you have to be able to deliver expertise and quality and the best customer experience that can't be matched by anybody else. So this is kind of the other thing where this is what makes the difference why buyers choose you over maybe even cheaper, less money intense imitators while you're trying to grow. So if your offer is a little more money, well, sometimes to some people that matters, but to your right audience, it won't really matter because they're committed to you. They love you. They love the way that you're delivering. They love the way that you show up with them. And that's what they care more about than just the very bottom line, because they understand that there's a balance between the two and you have the better end of it. So that's number two. So this is kind of the excellence part here is non-negotiable. And that's one of the toughest things to keep up when you're growing. Because there's like when you're growing, there's more and more pressure on the delivery, of course, and maintaining really high standards becomes harder and harder if you're not super proactive and clear about how you're going to do that. That's why I said your, your product, your service has to be set up to be able to 10 X without growing pains, because if that's not the case, it is, well, even if you're not going to 10 X overnight, you have to be able to pre plan to look forward in that way so that you don't hit all the snags normal people hit. So that's number two. Number three is, do you have an expandable market? Do you have a vast pool of paying customers that have the exact problem that you solve? Right? You, you can have the best product on the planet, but if it only really applies to a very, very small 
percentage of the population. doesn't matter how great you are. You're going to be the best kept secret for the rest of life and nobody will find out about you because it doesn't apply to them. So make sure that you prove this part before you grow. You have to test and prove this without you before you go because with, if you don't do that without it, you will hit a ceiling very quickly no matter how great your product or your service is. And for most of our clients, most entrepreneurs that I know, they don't really think about demand creation before it's too late. So, and that means you're hitting the ceiling. And what that means is you always must be working on marketing and sales, and you must have a long-term strategy that's a priority in your business. So what we see all the time with our clients is they don't really have a, a marketing and sales strategy in place because for a long time they do quite well growing organically, but then when they really want to grow faster, it becomes the chicken or the egg questions. Like, do we put all these people and infrastructure in place before we heap on the leads? Or do we heap on the leads before we put the people and the infrastructure in place? And that question is a really hard one to solve because, of course, it involves the question of cash flow. But if you don't solve that before you move forward, there's always going to be a gap somewhere. So that's why I'm saying your sales and marketing strategy has to be something that is set up way before you need it so you can get so you can actually launch it when you really need it and it's ready to go. And when I say set up, it means testing and working because that's the hardest part about marketing in sales to give it the time that it needs so it actually can match who you are and what you deliver and speak to the, the audience you want to speak to. So most of the clients that we work with, they always think about marketing and sales as a, we'll do that at some point when we need it. Well, if that's what you're doing, you're too late. So this is something that you have to start working on and testing way before you think you need it. So a really big one, the expandable market and making sure that you know how you deal with demand creation before it's too late. So this long-term strategy has to be a priority, one of the priorities in your business, because otherwise it's not going to work when you want it to work the most. And then of course, number four is, does it make you the money? Does it make the margin, the cash flow that you really need for rapid growth? Because if, if you have slim profits, Scaling becomes really difficult without major business model tweaks. So you can, you can get funding in place to, for like a stopgap measure, but um, real scaling depends on internal leverage. So always ask yourself, this thing that you're doing, is that something that's making me the money, that's making me the profit, or am I like are these margins too slim to really provide me with the cash flow that I need to keep growing and keep leveraging what I do? So those four are your, the, really the only scaling levers that you have, and you have to be able to hit all four of them for you to be able to, to grow quickly. So the, the key takeaway here is, is ignore distractions, get crystal clear on your number one thing, obsess over excelling within the parameters of your proven scalable market and absolutely say no to anything diluting your focus or your ability to be best in class. So the, the discipline here is in focusing all efforts on those four scaling levers and, and that will set you up for exponential and sustainable growth. So. Let's think about what could be some obstacles for scaling. So the, the biggest one that I mentioned earlier is maintaining quality and customer experience on all levels, because often what happens is standards slip through the cracks once the pressure gets bigger and bigger, which is what scaling does to your business. So the key, when that happens, the key obstacle you really have is you have inadequate, inadequate systems and processes and people in place who can help solve this 
as it happens without involving you every step of the way. So what we see a lot of times is that, you know, we have businesses that might even chug along pretty well without the owner when it's just kind of at maintenance, but then you suddenly have a windfall or a big opportunity or, you know, your, your ship comes in and suddenly you have a ton of new customers coming your way and um, you don't have the right people in place. Even if you have great people in place, you don't have the systems and processes in place to help them at this um, higher demand and everything kind of starts crumbling around the edges and starts falling apart. So that's why one of the biggest questions to ask before you even go there is as volume increases, can you actually deliver? Is your product or service ready to go? Have you really considered that? Are you ready, right? Because for this exponential growth experience, you have to become a completely different leader. You have to become a true CEO. You have to become somebody who actually takes their value from not work done by them, but done work done through them, as in through the team that you're leading so that they can become your, your, your officers, your extensions, your, your army that can get the job done. So is your product, your service ready? Are you ready? Is your team ready? And then of course, like I said earlier, we need to make sure that both your people and your processes are prepared to handle this, this wave coming in. Okay. So as a starting point, you want to fix over reliance on any manual workflows because there's far too much room for human error. And of course, technology gaps can really get in, in your way of getting something done. So you, you want to kind of, before you get going right pre growth, you want to look at your infrastructure and really look at our, is our infrastructure ready for growth? Do we have blueprints on hand on standby that we can kind of just drop in when we're ready to go? So this is where you audit your operations to make sure you have all these autonomous opportunities in place. So operations has to be in a place where you have, and this is the stuff we always talk about, right? This is like, you have all your automations in place, you have planning in place, you have leadership systems in place, you have a team in place, you know who the people are there in the right seats. This is where all those pieces have to be in the right place for you to really hit it. Because if you have a flat organization right now, so you know, even if you have a teeny tiny business with a handful of people, but it's flat as in it's you and your people, right? That doesn't allow for oversight and accountability at a larger scale. So this is where we, it, it becomes necessary to really build that chain of command, that, that, that hierarchy that looks kind of like a pyramid with we need you, then we need a mid-level, and then we need the people who actually implement. Because otherwise, it's exactly what you don't want, where the more you grow, the more work it means on you, the more falls through the cracks, the more stress, the more insanity, the less, you know, the, the more your reputation suffers, and the less everybody actually gets and makes from this. And that's, of course kind of the nightmare that you don't want. <clears throat> so this is the, the time when you want to be asking, asking, is your organization really able to support growth? So if you're flat, it doesn't allow for the oversight and accountability at a larger scale. So you have to look at, all right, how do we build this leadership layer that will actually allow us to make sure we're firing on all cylinders, everybody's on the same page, everybody's rowing in the same direction together, nobody's sticking their oar in the water, right? So to get ahead of this, it's your job to scale your leadership structure proactively because if things fall apart and then you turn around, you go, oh my God, we have to put all this stuff in place, it's too late already. Now we have to do a lot of cleanup. Now we have to, 
it's it's really stressful a lot of times that means letting people go it means tearing stuff down again before we build it back up and that means a lot of time money and momentum lost so first it means building your leadership with structure and that means either taking some of your existing team members who are absolute a players who have like that DNA of an A player and then you give them the systems, the structures and the leadership to build them up or you're hiring up, meaning you're hiring somebody who can come in with leadership experience through growth, who brings in system structures and people and they can build this model for you. But the caveat with that is like unless you present them with a really good strategy that they can build their own strategy on, it means they're just going to build their own strategy, which may not be in alignment with what you're thinking, right? So this is, this is a tricky moment, which is why I always encourage our clients to set up the basic foundation themselves so that it's exactly what they know, what they want, what they know works, what they're in alignment with, and then the leader that you hire, you can bring them on board with that and they can build their own strategy on that. And now we have an organization that's actually aligned and on the same page. So when, you, when you're when you thinking about building your leadership structure, that what that means is putting clear, putting those systems and structures in place, building clear roles, having goals and expectations that flow really well together and in the end it always goes back to the my favorite subject the c's right and and at this point we actually have the five c's so giving them the clarity which means the big picture that they need the context the information that they need the certainty the which means the leadership the backup the mentoring that they need the consistency of being able to get feedback to help them evolve. And then of course the communication along the way to make sure everybody gets and stays on the same page. So the bottom line here really is to successful scaling depends on anticipating barriers versus reacting to them. Cause by the time you start reacting to them, you guessed it, you've already lost a ton of time, money and energy and momentum and it's stressful and you might have lost your passion for it already and it's a big mess and nobody wants that. Because if you're doing it right, your obstacles can really be converted into smooth transitions fueling continued momentum and that's what we all want. So think about this again, listen through this again Make sure that when you want to, you know, 2025 is right around the corner. If your goal is massive growth in this year coming up, let's make sure that you do it right with the right foundations in place so that when you heap on, when the wave comes your direction, when you heap on the pressure that you're ready, your team is ready, your product, your service is ready, and you can just go. So I hope this helped tremendously. We have a great training out there that is free. You can hop into that training right away. I'll put the link in the comments below. Check out that training. And if there's anything we can help with, of course, let us know. Have a rest of uh, a fabulous rest of your